Emmy Sunshine joins us on Real Music TV. Hi, good to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, a question that came to my mind as I looked over your biography, the word prodigy comes up in a lot of reviews and stuff. Is that a word that you respond well to or are you like, eh, stop it? I mean, I used to respond well to it when I was more of a child around nine or 10, but mm -hmm. I mean, I think over time it becomes a little bit um, repetitive. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. But it's clear that people admire how much you've accomplished at your age and have been doing so for quite some time now. Um, that a cool feeling? Is there pressure with that? I mean, I think there's always pressure with it, but I mean, I, I really enjoy playing music and getting to um, inspire people and inspire people very young who want to start playing themselves. So, I mean, I think it's really a blessing to be able to, you know, be who I am and kind of encourage people to be who they are. So you're a Tennessee native. Where where did you grow up in the state? I grew up in a little town called Madisonville, Tennessee. It's this little tiny town. Um, we live about like 45 minutes away from Knoxville. I mean, like it's it's very very small. And my family and I, we have a little farm, and we just kind of grew up there. And um, we made music and we sang, and it was a very normal thing for us to do. So right. I mean, I I had a I had a really cool childhood. My family would take me out to play shows and they would take me to different concerts all the time. And my grandmothers were singers as well. And mm. they used to harmonize with me when I was a baby from what I was told. Nice. And yeah, I mean, I had a lot of music in my life. So the way you sing, the way you write, your orientation toward toward uh, country music and being from East Tennessee, I'm sure people throw Dolly Parton comparisons at you. What, what kind of hero and is she for you? How do you see Dolly, because you're from the same region. I mean, her writing has always stood out to me. Like, her as a writer, I mean, like, that's something that I've always connected with and kind of related to. I mean, like, and I just sort of have always loved what she does. I mean, of course, and, and how she's so diverse in what she does is something that I really admire. And I inspire to be one day because, I mean, I really enjoy seeing someone who is this magnificent woman, you know, following her dreams and her career. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of musicians, especially in country and bluegrass, you know, they get going young. They could even get very good, at, you know, at 10 or 11 or 12 years old. You were making albums by that point. What was your mindset? What do you, as you look back, what explains your ambition level to start putting as much music out there as you could? Yeah, I put my first album out when I was seven, actually. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> it was it was really a lot of fun. I mean, like it was my first time in the studio and working with other musicians, and, and it was really a learning point for me. I, I really enjoyed it. But I guess the first time that I really thought that like this is the career that I want was when I was around five or six, I guess. Because mm. I was thinking about, I remember I was, we were at Walgreens, and my dad was sitting up in the front seat, and he was like, hey, Amy, we're just here to get a few things. Like, and I said, well, why are we here? And he was like, we're here to get a few things. And I was like, no, 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 no. Why are we here? Like, what's the use of all this? Like, why are we doing this? I mean, what's our purpose in life? And he was like, oh, well, you'll find that out one day. And I just kind of went searching for it and found that music is where I really fit. You've put out five or six albums by now, including the one that came out last year. Um, how have you felt the evolution, you know, being more, you talked about the learning curve, you know, you must feel pretty confident about what you're trying to get when you go in the studio now. I do, most of the time, I, I really do. I've been working with Tony Brown too, and he has really um, kind of motivated me a lot, and he's kind of helped me with my direction and what we're trying to do, but I mean, like, I think that when we were we were recording Family Wars, that album, I mean, it was really a lot of fun to find all these songs that were so different, and they kind of uh, kind of rooted from like that Americana vein and everything as well. And I was seeing how that direction really fit me, and how over time I have sort of um, changed where I was going, and how you find things that you love, and then you kind of shape it into uh, m your music, and that's something that I've done a lot over the years. So yeah, my direction has changed a lot, and, and I think that, um, yeah, my music has too, so going into the studio, and I think that um, a lot of times I do know what I want now because I'm more confident in what I want. For, t for folks, Tony Brown is just a legendary national producer. He is, yes. He's covered so much ground, we couldn't go into it, but he's certainly somebody who's seen a n many, many styles of singer and songwriter. 
execute records, so he must be great to be uh, working with him. The most recent thing that's popped up with you that's, that's surprising and fun is, is a project with Bootsy Collins. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of, I get that question a lot. Yeah. Um, it's very unexpected. Um, I was supposed to be in Cincinnati before all of this thing happened with COVID. Um, I was supposed to be in Cincinnati to play the opening day parade for the Reds. And I, I was supposed to be there, and he was too, actually. So I started looking into him because I was told that he was going to be there. And I'd heard a little bit about him before my family would play some stuff that he was in. And, and I was like, OK, that's really, really cool. But I didn't know a lot about him. So I started looking into his music and, and uh, what he produced and everything as well and how amazing bass player he is as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I started looking into him. And uh, actually, he started looking into my music as well. So. After a while and everything got canceled, um, he contacted us and said, hey, um, would you like to write the lyrics to this song and for this project I'm working on and, you know, sing on it as well? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and we, I, he just sent me the track and I started like coming up with these lyrics and we still haven't met in person yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, okay, um, you write some lyrics to it, figure out what you think fits, and we'll see what happens. And I finally finished the lyrics, and I just kind of was inspired by, you know, like what everyone was feeling during this time and feeling yeah. during COVID. And I kind of wanted to write a song that was inspirational and something that could be like, hey, yes, we are going through this right now, and but I really think that uh, we can make it through it, and there's things that uh, we can rise above, and that's sort of the whole motivation for that song. But uh, I finally finished it, and I did my vocal track, and uh, I sent it over to him, and here we are now, and the song is out, so yeah. Uh -huh. well, he's such a fun character. I mean, he's just like somebody you could take a lot of inspiration from, just the man's radiates oh, absolutely. positivity. <laughs> And uh, have you gotten to hang out with him yet? No, I haven't met him yet. You in still person. haven't met him. I haven't person. met him. <laughs> All right, it's going to happen. Just finally, what are you uh, working on now? Obviously, that everything's in sort of flux. But uh, what are you looking forward to that when you when you can start to realize uh, the normal career path here again? Well, I mean, it's sort of difficult right now because like. We're playing a few little shows every now and then, very, very, very small venues. I've done one so far, and I, I've, I, it was a little bit scary, but we, we showed up and, and I played, and, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. But I mean, like, I can't wait till like we can go out and actually play shows again. And I, I love playing festivals and mm -hmm. things like that as well. But um, I, I think like. I think we're going to get back into a norm eventually. I just think it's a little bit at a time and waiting to see what happens in the world and how things go with uh, how many cases there are and, and what happens. But I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on for me. I've been working on some new songs. I mean, there's so many new things. I'm actually going to sing a few for you guys as well. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot in the works. Well, you write a lot. You're a prolific writer. So imagine that you're uh, kicking out a few. Oh, right now. Oh, definitely. Quarantine has really given me a, a lot of time to focus on my writing. <laughs> Amy Sunshine, thanks for joining us on Real Music TV. Thank you kindly.